Hi, welcome to this follow-up question in my series on working out the acute angle theta between a plane and a line. So I've got an example here which you might like to try. I'm assuming that you watched that earlier tutorial. If not, there's a link below in the description to that tutorial. Okay, so for this question, we've got to find the acute angle theta between the plane pi and the line L, where the plane pi has the equation r dot all of 4i minus 2j plus k. This is in scalar product or dot product form. And we've got the Cartesian form for the equation of the line L. It's x minus 3 over 2 equals y plus 1 over minus 3 equals 1 minus z over 5. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a few moments to pause the video. And when you come back, I'll take you through the work solution. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. You might want to fast forward to check your answer. Otherwise, I'm just going to take you through the working now. So just very quickly, going back to the previous video, I showed you that if you had a line L intersecting a plane pi and we wanted to find the acute angle theta, then we first found out the acute angle alpha, say, between the normal to the plane n and the vector b, a vector parallel to the line L. And I showed you that we could use the formula, the dot product formula, when it's rearranged to find out the cosine of angle alpha. And once we had found out alpha, we could take it away from 90 degrees and get theta. So that's essentially the method. So we next need to establish the normal to the plane and the vector b parallel to the line. So if you're familiar with the dot product form of the equation of a plane, you'd know that the coefficients of i, j and k, which in this case are 4, minus 2 and 1, represent a vector which is perpendicular to the plane. So what I'm going to write then is let n be that vector. I've written it in column form, but it's up to you. You might want to write it in terms of i, j and k. Now when it comes to working out the vector b, then you should be familiar with the Cartesian form of the equation of a line. And I've purposely picked this example to demonstrate one other idea. You must remember that the Cartesian form for a line is this, x minus x1 over L equals y minus y1 over M equals z minus z1 over N, where x1, y1, z1 are the coordinates of a particular point on this line, but the direction of the line is L, M, N. And we can see that L would be the 2, M would be the minus 3. But when it comes to working out N, I've got to make an adjustment because the equation here doesn't start with Z. What I do is I change it by multiplying top and bottom of this fraction by negative 1. And that's going to give me z minus 1 all over negative 5. And so n is negative 5. So a vector in the direction of the line L can be written as a column vector as 2, negative 3, negative 5. OK? So with that, all I need to do now is work out what the cosine of alpha is by using this formula here. And if you do that, then I've done the scalar product here on the top between b and n. Obviously, you can do n and b, n dot b. It's the same as b dot n. And I've got that result in the numerator here. And we divide it by the magnitude of each vector. And because we're looking for an acute angle, in case this came out negative, I've put this as a modulus. OK, so we take the positive value. If you work that out, you'll find it is actually a positive value anyway. 
and it turns out to be 9 over root 38 times root 21 in the denominator, which as a decimal is 0.3185 and so on. So all you need to do now is just take the inverse cosine of that and that will get you alpha. It turns out to be 71.421 and so on degrees. And then I just need to take this away from 90 degrees to get theta. And if you do that, you end up with 18.6 degrees to one decimal place. So I hope you're able to get that. If not, at least being able to see how to do it again. Okay, so thanks for watching and hopefully you'll like this video or share it and take a moment to subscribe to my YouTube channel.